Hello everyone! Thank you for joining us today. We have a lot of exciting sessions about digital marketing, sales, and e-commerce, and many, many more. I see people are starting to trickle in. Come on, guys. Ask all of our friends to join this very exciting session. But before that, make sure you download the VFairs app on your mobile phone, which allows you to join sessions much easier via mobile. With that, chill for a few minutes and wait for our video for exciting reminders before we begin the session very shortly. See ya!
All right. I hope everyone can hear me. Good morning. Good afternoon. I hope it's not yet evening. It might be evening in other parts of the world, but welcome to Nestle Indonesia session where we want you to join our team. I am Joby and I will be your host for this session. Just a few house rules to ensure a smooth flowing session today. Keep an eye on the chat box and make sure not to flood them with spam, guys. Relax. Relax with the comments. We will, we will get there. You can catch important announcements and links on how you can engage with us via slido.com. You may see the chat box for the code for this session. Have your mobile phones on standby to scan the QR code that you will see on the slides so that you can see career opportunities in marketing, sales, data analytics across all the Nestle markets around the globe. Great, let us begin this session. In, okay, our slides are catching up. All right, let's proceed and meet our speakers for today. Introducing, I think we need to move to the next slide. We are moving to the introduction of our inspiring speaker. See, technology can handle. Technology is very excited. It's lagging a bit. So we can proceed to the slide of our speakers. Is it just me? All right, let us proceed to our speakers and unveil them. There we go. Introducing our inspiring Aussie keynote speaker for today, Guy Calloway, Communications Director, and Dienda Andriani, Head of Media at Nestle Indonesia. Guy currently leads the areas in marketing, communications, functional capability, and transformation for the organizations, people, and brands, including media, insights, data, and digital, content and experience. Dienda leads a team of media experts who drive media capabilities internally and externally, while ensuring that all of the organization's media activities are being implemented as efficiently and effectively as possible to aid in driving business results. I am excited to lead, to learn from Guy and Dienda about what they do every day at Nestle Indonesia and the skills that they look for in future talents because you guys might have it. With that, Guy and Dienda, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Dinda, you wanna kick off? Yeah, so good morning, everyone. Before I pass it on to Pagai to kick off, for, I would like to give a shout out to all the participants from Indonesia. Please let us know that you're there, kasi jempolnya, kasi hatinya, to support us, to know that you guys, you guys are there and excited for the session. Jadi kita juga makin semangat, yeah. Yay, so yeah. Here you go. We have lots of hearts, thumbs ups, and smiles. Okay. You can awesome. kick off, guys. Good to see everyone. Awesome. Good morning, everybody. <clears throat> Excuse me. I need the next slide, Crystal, please. There we go. All right. Um, okay, we're going to do remote control. We'll see how this goes. So good morning, everyone from Nestle Indonesia. Um, this session is intended, yes, for uh, for those of you who are in Indonesia who've been joining all of the sessions um, over the last couple of days, um, as well as obviously people from many other countries around the world who are, who are interested perhaps in joining Nestle or applying for roles um, in any of the digital functional um, capabilities that, that you may have or that you may be interested in. So it's not only specific to Nestle Indonesia, we're very proud of what we do here, um, but it's definitely applicable also um, across any other country and, and any other Nestle, Nestle market. You've seen a lot of what Nestle does um, through our speakers, also through our guest partners. And what we thought would be interesting was to look at it through a lens of how our media team and our brand teams and other, other functions 
um, also apply it um, in our roles every day um, when we when we come to work. But not just what um, what we do, but what are the qualities um, that our teams have today? Um, and what qualities can you bring out perhaps when you're applying for um, a role with, with Nestle? That really helps to bring digital to the fore um, and helps our teams, our brands, um, and our consumers as well. So having some sort of digital capability, of course, is uh, obviously fundamental to, to any marketing role. And that might be as a generalist or a specialist, and we'll touch on briefly what the different types of roles are um, that we collaborate with in this, in this space. But beyond those capabilities is also about um, behaviours that will really make you stand out um, and accelerate in, in these roles. <clears throat> because we want to make sure um, that you're clear not only what we do, um, but how you, you can really stand out and excel um, and help uh, obviously developing yourself, but developing our, our brands. So let's have a look at uh, what these roles can, can be um, and why they're important. All of these roles at some point are collaborating with, with each other. Um, and the reason being that uh, marketing communications and particularly digital is increasingly complex. Um, obviously it's increasingly digital and it's very, very data, data driven. So collaborating between these roles um, becomes increasingly important and understanding, having an appreciation for the role of digital and the role of data um, in optimizing all of these activities is really critical. We're gonna take you through, yep, sorry. What are the behaviors and skills that really help you to stand out? Um, and importantly, why, they, why are they important in different areas of what we do uh, every day? So the first one I'm gonna take you through, then Dinder will take you through the second and I'll bring it home uh, with the third one. Feel free to ask any questions um, along the way. We have a QA and a session at the end. So you may be interested in uh, perhaps some of, these, um, some of these qualities or some of these platforms that we work with. Um, we're happy to, to answer any of your questions. So the first one is to really look at yourself through a, a creative and a data-driven um, lens. So why is this important? And how do they actually complement each other? Because typically creator, creative and being data-driven, not necessarily always on the same page. So we're gonna see how does data drive our creative and our campaign quality and the impact that it has um, on our brand building and our digital activities. First of all, you've got to ask why is good creative content important? It sounds like a really obvious question, um, but it's actually because creative still is the dominant driver of a return on investment across all media platforms. The great thing about digital and with all the tools that we have, technology that we use, we can really understand the contribution of creative specifically, um, as well as the media and the brand contribution to the return on the investment that we're putting behind media. Um, return on investment is really interesting at the moment because there is so many different types of technology that we can use, whether it's in ad tech or martech, um, so many different platforms and emerging platforms. So understanding where you're getting your return on the investment becomes uh, really important to make right choices. In Indonesia, um, Let's talk about a couple of stats on, on mobile and on digital platforms. Of course, we have a huge population and comes with that a huge youth population and a very big um, digital and mobile first population. Indonesia is one of the biggest markets uh, globally for Instagram um, and particularly stories and reels. Uh, Indonesia is also one of the top three countries globally for uh, TikTok um, in terms of uh, TikTokers per se, creating content, and now emerging is uh, shop attainment through TikTok. Um, and over 100 million um, monthly active users on YouTube, which is a phenomenal volume um, and a big proportion of our, of our consumers. So not only is digital important, it becomes an integrated imperative part of all of our brand um, campaigns. We're going to look at this through the lens of data um, and what we call dynamic creative optimization. 
when you have uh, a, a lot of consumers across a lot of platforms, you have the opportunity to bring together strategy, creative, media, and analytics to inform the creative that, uh, that our consumers are seeing. So DCO is actually an ad technology that autom automates and creates personalized advertising based on certain um, data signals at the moment that the consumer um, sees the ad that we're, that we're showing them. These signals can be things like, where are they at a certain time? Perhaps um, they're at university. Perhaps they're standing outside a mini market. Um, their behaviors, their online behaviors, what are they interested in? the context and even the weather are read in real time and enables us to um, adapt and create uh, different um, creatives to the audience. But the real question is, why do we do this? We really do this so that we're optimizing the media delivery um, so that in real time, we're resonating with the consumer, engaging with the consumer or encouraging them to take a specific, um, a specific action. So let's have a look at an example of um, one of our campaigns. So we've done a campaign on our brand, which is NAN, with um, one of our, our global partners, DCO partners called AdLib. Um, what we do here is we set up uh, um, online different, different online audiences. Perhaps they're interested in education. Perhaps they're interested in um, health or cooking. Um, we then multiply that by the different messages that we want to pass uh, related to the brand. Then through another filter of what time are they going to see a certain ad, um, whether it's a day part or even based on breakfast or lunch. And then for this campaign specifically, um, one, of the, one of the signals was what is the weather like? Because that was also going to have an impact on the type of creative that was served. Out of all of this was created over 5,000 different pieces of, of creative. Now, these creatives are not developed manually. Obviously, this is automated. Um, through AI, uh, over 3,700 animated banners, depending on um, the platform that the consumer was on at the time, um, over 1,000 videos, 220 on, on YouTube, connecting to those um, five audiences. And what we see is because the ultimate, um, as we saw before, why do we do it, is, is all about personalization. And so when you see the campaign result, what this results in is a much more effective um, cost per, per reach. Um, you get lower uh, cost per view or CPM um, on the videos, um, and you get view through rates of these videos um, through display or YouTube um, at a much higher rate than a normal baseline. So these are the types of um, uh, data points, if you like, or thinking that we go through in terms of being creative, but at the, at the same time being data driven. The second one is on platform insights and understanding in this example, how do I do really first class um, content on YouTube? So we use the ABCD best practice of, of YouTube. Um, the first one being attention. We all know watching YouTube that when a six second bumper comes up or we're watching a 15 second ad, we need to be hooking and sustaining attention right from the first second. Um, the second one is branding. You have to brand early, you have to brand often, and you have to brand richly. This is because if you're running an ad which is skippable, if I skip the ad and I don't know what the brand is, then you've actually wasted, um, wasted that advertising money. As with all creative, you need to create a, a connection through the, through the ad. I want someone to, to think or feel something particular about the ad and the messages that we're passing. And then ultimately the last one, which is to take action. So you can see in this Milo ad that we've hit all the A, Bs, Cs and Ds um, and really hits those, um, those platform first insights. The second technology that we use on Creative, um, which is a tool called CreativeX. And this is an AI technology to really help us improve our return on investment on our, on our digital assets. CreativeX gives us a quality score. So we load up the, the, brand, um, the brand ads before they go live. So if you look first at the one um, on, on the right, which is for Coco Crunch, this was going on um, Instagram Reels. Now on Instagram Reels, it's, what's really important is that you get the aspect ratio right. You need to make sure that the brand is, is up front, 
right? Um, because uh, particularly in Reels case, you can be skipping Reels quite fast. So you wanna make sure that you get the branding um, very obvious. You need to make sure that it's the right length. Uh, on Instagram, for example, typically it's sound off. So you need to be creating content that is uh, appropriate for um, someone who's watching um, Instagram or Facebook with their sound off. Uh, and then on the other side, you can see a Dan Cow ad for YouTube, where YouTube typically is going to be sound on. So you want to make sure that you're getting not only the visual branding, but also the audio branding. So these are technical qualities um, that all make sure that the foundation and the basics are right uh, before we go live with, with a campaign, which is all very nice, but we have to then ensure that it delivers uh, a, a particular result. And in this case, we have two campaigns, just to show you this. These are both campaigns that were very strong on, on creative quality. Um, you can see the one on the left here, which is for uh, Nescafe, where you get an incremental baseline above the baseline of ad recall at plus 6% and an increment of 3% um, on awareness. Okay, Dinda, over to you to the second part. Crystal, I've requested the intro. Okay, so hi everyone. Let me continue with the second part of the presentations. So aside from needing to be creative and data-driven as explained by Pagai in the first session, the second thing that you need to be if you want to join us is to be analytical. So to get everyone, sorry, to get everyone on the same page, what is analytical thinking? It is the ability to gather relevant information and identify key issues from a base of information, relating and comparing data from different sources, identifying cause and effect relationships, drawing conclusions to arrive to an appropriate solutions. So that sounds quite a lot, right? So to be able to do this, to be analytical in this role, as, as also already mentioned by Pagar earlier, is to have the digital capability and you need to have the understanding of the digital media basics. So for today's session, we will cover a few topics which are most important for Nestle and which will you will encounter on a day-to-day basis if you work for Nestle. So let's start with, with the audience, right? So what is audience? Audience is a consumer group based on category understanding and brand target consumers, which are built on actionable data signals. So the keyword here is actually actionable. That's why in Nestle, we are already shifting from target consumers, which is based on attitude and behavior to audiences, which is actionable because they are based on a real data signal, such as a transactional data, uh, interests, what contents they consume, what do they search on Google, um, what do they watch on YouTube, etc. right? So example here is for our brand Dankau. We have segmented the Dankau moms into three big buckets, which are breastfeeding graduates, where the main interest here is on toddler nutrition. And then we have the second one on milestone seeker, where the interest is on toddler development and milestone. And the third one is the parenting doubters with main interest on parenting style. So we were able to define this audiences using all the available data signals to come up with three scalable audience bucket for campaign targeting purpose and also personalizations. So analytical skills and thinking are really needed in this part as audience is really key to everything that we do in, in digital, right? And we really need to ensure that we define the correct and the right audience and that we target them effectively. So when we talk about uh, targeting the audience uh, effectively, then it brings us to our next topic, which is programmatic. Programmatic is very important for Nestle Indonesia. About 70 to 80% of our digital activities are actually done through programmatic. So to sum up what programmatic is, is basically the, the usage of automated technology to buy at inventory, opposed to doing it manually like we used to do in the olden days, right? So with programmatic, we are also able to do personalizations and it is also very important for us because in Nestle, we believe in personalization at scale, which means that we are able to tailor uh, creative and messages uh, specific 
to a to a specific audience, right? So, for example, here um, again for the Denkau campaigns, we ran a personalized campaign using the three buckets of, of audiences that we have defined before: the parenting doubters, the breastfeeding moms, and the milestone speakers. And actually, we managed to see a really good results coming from the personalized campaigns, uh, where we see a significant uh, increase in terms of the CPR for the personalized assets compared to the generic ones. Then aside from that, aside from that, that the benefit that we get out of programmatic is transparency. We can get the result real time by accessing the dashboard. We get accountability. We get efficiency because it saves time. It reduces the wasted ad spends and of course also the effectiveness because we manage to uh, optimize the campaigns and uh, allocate budget based on the performing channels. So being analytical when it comes to programmatic basically means that we should be able to always identify how to constantly optimize our campaigns to ensure that we got the most optimum results. For example, coming back again to the dental example here, we would know how to optimize the campaign by putting more budget on the parenting daughter segment as it's, it was the most performing one. While for the other, we can also try to improve our creative and messaging for the last performing audience to see whether we can still improve their performance. Then, um, however, doing programmatic, which actually involves a lot of automation, also comes with risk too. That's why we also need to be sure about our brand safety and our brand suitability when it comes to programmatic. So brand safety is basically about ensuring uh, that our uh, brands only appear in a safe environment. We don't want to be associated with content that are inappropriate or even uh, against Muslim values, such as uh, adult content, violence, uh, extreme political views, child engagement, and, and so much more, right? While for brand suitability is actually about ensuring that we maintain a positive reputation by actively seeking an appropriate environments that can impact your brand perception. For example, for KitKat, it would be highly appropriate to, to appear in a gaming environment because, you know, um, at a break at a, KitKat, at a KitKat, and so when people are playing games, they need a break, and so they need a kitchen. Or for example, for one of our brands, Milo, where sport is a great teacher. So being in a sport environment for Milo is also really appropriate as it will reinforce uh, the brand's perceptions and also increase the ad effectiveness. So when it comes, especially when it comes to brand safety, we really need to make a quick decision whether we want to be associated with a certain type of content. Uh, should there be a, like a hot topic or a hot issue? For example, during COVID uh, two years ago, there was also a clear guideline coming from Nestle Global that we should uh, try to avoid uh, COVID related content because at that time, the COVID content were more um, negative because there was a lot of uncertainty and confusion about uh, COVID, which is very different from where we are today right now. Right. Okay, next. Then after brand safety, we also need to monitor our viewability. Uh, ad viewability is basically making sure that all of our ad impressions are actually viewable and can actually seen by, by humans and not bots, right? So in Nestle, we have a very high viewability standard, which is higher than the industry benchmark. Um, and which means that we, in Nestle, we are even stricter in making sure that our ads are really seen and not just served and that, uh, and all the our publisher partners have to to know the rules and also the guidelines and 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 have to uh, this criteria has to be be met by them. And we need to always optimize our ad viewability and ensure that uh, they are seen, such as placing the ads above the fold or actually using ad sizes that outperform in terms of viewability. So viewability is actually really key. That even some marketers have also looked at not only CPM but uh, PCPM, which means viewable impressions to be the future digital currency. And it's, it is actually something that Nestle is also looking at currently. And the next one, we'll get into search. Search for us in Nestle has been also one of the key priority in the past few years. We see search as the vehicle that actually helps connecting the consumer's demands with our content, whether our contents actually sit on the brand websites on the e-retail sites or on the social media channels as well. So why search is important for us? Because search 
access to undecided consumers to influence them early in their uh, purchase journey. So achieving higher visibility than competition in search usually results in higher brand recall and also top of mind awareness. So at Nestle, we have the Nestle 2.0 framework, which is a holistic search approach, uh, approach across search engines, across uh, e-retail platforms, and also uh, plat uh, digital platforms, so, and while integrating both organic, paid, and search. And we are following the key guiding uh, principle on search, uh, which are mobile first, as mobile now accounts for more than 50% of all searches globally, and then audience driven, as now we have gone beyond keyword targeting, as we are now able to do audience-based search targeting based uh, using our CRM data, and then integrated as in the consolidations between paid and organic search, and holistic as consumer search activities now can occur outside the traditional search engine, Therefore, a holistic approach between traditional search engine, a retail search, and platform search is really necessary. So the Search 2.0 framework and the guiding principle will actually enable a really holistic search programs, which are really consumer-centric uh, and focus on positively impacting the consumer search experience throughout all stages of the journey. Now, last topic is actually data, which we have touched upon multiple times before. So I think when we talk about digital, it's all about data. Whatever we do uh, in digital is related to data, whether we are trying to collect data or we are uh, activating um, and, and, and using data throughout our campaigns, right? So of course, there's the first party data, the second party data, and then the third party data, which uh, I think most of you would understand uh, what it is, although not going into the details. But however, uh, coming into the third party data, um, we all know that there has been uh, a rising concern about consumer pri privacy, as we know that the third party data is collected through cookies. Uh, so the, this rising concern about consumer privacy has led to a uh, deprecation of third party cookies, which we all know have been further delayed to 2024 after initially planned for 2021 by Google. So what does it actually mean for us marketers who have been relying heavily on third party cookies? Because we know we have using third party cookies to, to build our audience segment uh, to, for, re, for retargeting purpose and also to serve personalized ads, right? So what, what we really need to do is we need to prepare for the cookie world that is coming sooner or later. Uh, yeah, we don't know exactly when, but we really need to prepare to ensure that we are ready to face it when the time comes. So what should we do? And this is what we are also doing in Nestle Indonesia. So the first one is we really need to collect first party data. Uh, first party data now becomes more and more valuable for us as this is our most trusted, most valuable and most reliable uh, data which is collected directly from our consumers. So we need to prioritize first party data now more than ever. And then the second one is create better privacy policy. Uh, this is turning to point number one, because with better privacy policy, you will also gain the confidence from the consumers to share their data to you. And then the third one, we have to do test and learn with various cookie solutions that are actually available in the market. So these are only a few of cookie solutions that are available from using your first party data. There's also universal ID, there's contextual targeting, there are cohort targeting, and there are still many other options available coming from our partners. So for Nestle Indonesia itself, we have run a multiple cookie-less test and learns. One of them is for our Bear Brand Purity campaign, which we ran in December last year with one of our global partner, Teats, where we have tried the cookie-less uh, Teats audience and we compared them with the cookie audience. And actually the result uh, was not disappointing at all. As you can see here, the CTR and the PTR between the cookie-less and the cookie audience is actually pretty similar or even slightly higher for the cookie-less cookie audience. So of course, this is just one of the solutions. And like I said, there are plenty more, which we all need to try. And of course, not one solution can solve all the problems of the third party cookie deprecation. So yeah, I think let's use whatever time we have from now until the time actually comes uh, for the cookie future by collecting our first party data, testing and learning, and really prepare ourselves for the cookie list work. Because ready or not, the time will come and hopefully we will be ready by then. Okay, so that's the end of my session. Hopefully it has been useful. And I will pass the next one back to Bagai. Over to you, Bagai. Thank you, Dinda. 
So we're coming um, now to the last and final uh, part. If we can just get to the next slide, please. Okay, so the third one um, is to be curious. And what do we have here? You, you know that there are constant changes and new trends happening every day, um, whether it's to do with uh, different uh, platform updates, whether it's to do with new platforms, um, and importantly, understanding how our consumers are also um, changing on their, their own uh, digital behavior. So this really means that we have to be at the forefront and understanding not only these trends and these changes, but adapting and being agile and, and learning from them as well. So for example, in Indonesia, TikTok is the new search engine uh, for Gen Z um, and the new place to do, to do shopping. Um, of course, there's a lot of other social commerce uh, platforms um, that, are, that are arising um, and very popular. Uh, WhatsApp, both for engagement and education, and um, of course, music streaming platforms uh, for alternative audio as well. So a couple of examples, and this really came out during the pandemic um, for our brand of, of Milo, who, you know, previously we would do a lot of offline um, activations and engagement for the Milo brand. All of a sudden during pandemic, you can't do that face-to-face, -face, um, but we went to the next best thing at the time, and we continue to do it, which is using WhatsApp for business. What that's allowed us to do is to collect a huge amount of first party data and activate that data um, and drive really fantastic engagement rates. But this really um, meant that we had to learn very fast, adapt um, very fast and really uh, keep on trying and understanding uh, on that particular platform what was working and, um, and how we could continuously improve and build on that to, to see that some of the future opportunities, for example, on WhatsApp, director purchase and targeted purchase. Another example being um, hashtag challenge, which we did on Bear Brand. Um, understanding for brands how to, how to go into content on TikTok um, and be platform native is really important. Um, so hashtag challenge was one of the first things that we did uh, for our brands. You can see we've got fantastic views, um, very good engagement rates, um, and that was really just, again, also about understanding how do we bring the brand to life um, through platforms like, uh, like TikTok. And then another nice example from one of our teams, um, which is all about test and learn, where they really tried to understand how do I take a brand and, and, and start on TikTok. Um, this is from our Maggie brand. They, the brand team created TikToks in our content studio and in our in-house kitchen. Um, they understood what was on FYP, what was trending on TikTok that week. They applied it to their, their product messages and um, they also got fantastic organic results. So to summarize, we really are looking for people and need people who, uh, who want to join and can join in any of the digital space or in digital marketing space that are able to adapt with creative and being data-driven and, and work with the two simultaneously, to work across um, teams and platforms and, and uh, data um, and analyze and, and understand how to approach and continuously refine and optimize um, our campaigns. And then always be curious because what we're seeing is not only transformation, but transformation now that is just normal on a day-to-day -day basis. And so continuously curious um, to understand new platforms and how to bring our brands to life. So thank you, everyone. Really appreciate your time. Um, thank you also, Dinda. And I think we are now passing over to uh, Q&A. Thank you so much, Guy and Dinda. Oh, my gosh. You know, I'm I'm personally very impressed having worked with uh, in a big region. We're in Indonesia market. It doesn't really take a lot, you know, to really engage. I'm the, the audience are very engaged. And to see that now Indonesia is top three country globally, that's very impressive. 
So I know we have a lot of questions coming in, very interesting questions. So I'll jump right into it. Huh? So probably let us start with this one. Okay. All right. Okay, since our topic is all about we want people to join our Nestle Indonesia team. So what is something that will catch your interest the most when the candidates are applying to Nestle? Probably Guy? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. I'm looking out to uh, people in my team and trying to get inspiration from who we've got on the floor. Uh, yeah, look, you know, I, it might sound like a cliche, but really understanding what your personal value add is and how you personally stand out. Um, we see a lot of candidates and uh, from whether it's from a paper CV or a LinkedIn profile um, into interviews where it can often feel quite generic because people are talking about what they think you want to hear um, as opposed to really understanding who the person is, um, which I think is important. I don't think you should necessarily try to think that you can adapt to everything. What we're looking for is people who understand what their strengths are and how they can apply those strengths um, to and, and really bring that to, to their job. Okay, thank you for that. And I think if you guys listen to the, there are three things we're looking for. We want people who are creative and data-driven. We want people who are analytical and who are curious. Okay, let's move on to the next question. Is there any chance for Creative X to collaborate with social media other than Instagram and TikTok on a daily basis, such as Kakao Talk or WhatsApp? Uh, do you want me to take this, Tinder? Yeah, so Creative X being an above market, it's a it's a global partner that we have. Um, and how we use it depends on the partners that Creative X themselves on board. Um, how Creative X works is they will they will then do um, more like a test and learn to really make sure that the different platforms um, laid over with, with best practice gives then us um, the right insights about how to prepare creative across different platforms. So that's not something that we could answer at a local market level. That would have to, that would be a discussion between a platform and, um, and CreativeX. Then if that platform was applicable to, to us at Nestle, um, then we would onboard that. We're looking at the moment, for example, with um, CreativeX of also using not just branded content, but influencer content as well, because we know in Southeast Asia and in Indonesia, we do a lot of KOL and influencer content. Um, and so this can also really help influencers improve their engagement rates. And so it's a win-win for the brand um, and for the influencers. Yeah, and I think also just, just to add, for, yes. for now in Indonesia, we are uh, using creative acts for youtube and also uh instagram right uh facebook meta instagram but coming soon is will be tiktok which is of course the the rising platform in indonesia so we are really excited about that so i'm sure that nestle globally as well are also um you know updating also the the partnership with creative x in bringing in all the the platforms that we will definitely use uh globally as well so yeah uh, di digital acceleration in, in general, it's a journey. It may not be available today. Who knows next week it may be. So it we, I think that the mindset is more the test and learn mindset, just like what, was, what we discussed earlier from our previous campaign as well. Okay, more question. What can help with an application at Nestle? Any tips? Maybe Nyanda, when you first applied, if you can still recall. Oh application i think um i did have a, a strong media background uh, coming from with 17 years of experience in media agency so i think that was also uh one of my strengths i believe but then i think uh, the 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 magic really happens i think during the interview with all the users because there during the interview you can actually showcase your passion your your strength uh, the way you think the way how you would uh, solve your your problem solving skills for example so i think that really has has to show and you have to uh, bring it to life during during the during the interview so i think yeah and just be just be true to yourself be 
who you are. Don't try to pretend that you know everything because obviously you don't. Uh, I know that I I have actually learned so much during my three years in Nestle, mm -hmm. things that I didn't know before. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a, and show that you are very agile and that you want to work hard and that you want to learn. So that's I hope you guys it. in the audience are taking notes because these are priceless tips from our experts. Moving on. Um, you guys mentioned that there are many customers who uses TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Why do, why would, I'm trying to rephrase, why do you skip TikTok and add campaign if, of Milo and Nan? Why do we, why did we skip TikTok? Did we? <clears throat> I think that question was early on before we showed some of the TikTok okay. examples. But okay. yeah, I think there's always a choice when we do our media planning um, about which platforms to go for. And that's uh, campaign by campaign, brand by brand, and depending on the, the media objectives yeah, for, for the campaign. Yeah, I think also just to add on that, again, uh, we know that TikTok has been a rising platform since, I think, since the COVID especially, but we actually have not started using TikTok until uh, last year because mm. there was still a brand safety issue. Again, coming back to my point on brand safety, which where for Nestle, brand safety is very important. So even uh, directionally from, from global until we know that the platform is really safe for us, we we didn't touch it until there was a lot of test and learns uh, coming from the global. And then there's a green light and on actually using the platform, that's when we started using TikTok and we are now on TikTok like every time. Yeah. And uh, just to build on that a bit, that's what's great about Nestle, right? We're not just into the hype. Um, we, we do take our, our serious consideration of things and make sure, is it safe for the consumer? Is it good? It's always for the good. So moving on. Uh, during the pandemic, everyone made Dalgona coffee using Nescafe <laughs> to make it. Is it part of your marketing strategy too? You know, this is a really good example of um, the power of consumers and and consumers are co-creators in your brand building now um that did not come from from us uh it was organic it it started from some food bloggers um who picked it up across southeast asia and then different you know different countries um it kind of exploded all over social media right um so we were able to pick up on it and talk about it as well but the beauty of, of, of Dalgona and, and many other similar viral campaigns that have happened across different brands, um, the good ones, at least, that's what we try and manage, uh, is that they're very authentic. And we're very happy when, when these things um, happen. Yeah. Uh, if it had come from the brand, it can sometimes be seen as less authentic. Yes. Yeah. So those type of things, um, yeah, we, we, we let them go. It's a great example of the power of um, letting your consumers talk about your brands for you. True, true, true. And our products, Nescafe, are really quality products. That's why it's very easy to fall in love with these brands. Yeah, we our brands get a lot of organic talk happening on social media every day. True. Next one. How do you measure the creativity sense? Yeah. Um, it can be very emotional, I have to say. You have to be careful that you get the right balance between being data data powered and retaining retaining the um, the creativity. Right? You cannot measure um, creativity in its in its purest purest form because you have to overlay right. What what is the brand essence? What is my big idea? Um, and importantly, how do you bring it to life? You then measure how does a consumer understand it, for sure, and what, how does it drive your brand equity? Yes, but it's um, we measure it in different ways to what we've just talked about specifically on um, media assets and content. Okay. Unfortunately, that is all the time we have left. Thank you so much, Guy Tienda, for the insightful session. and. Uh, that you've just delivered. And a huge thank you to everyone who was attending this session. We hope you enjoyed hearing from our industry expert. And feel free, um, I hope you were inspired by their sharing. 
So digital acceleration plays a big role in marketing and there are always endless opportunities to look forward when being creative, analytical, and curious. Those three things. So go ahead, scan the QR code that you're seeing so that because we want you, we want you in the Nestle Indonesia team. Don't forget to catch the next session by our Nestle Indochina team uh, featuring PG and Wong Git from Meta as they accelerate conversational commerce through artificial intelligence. You will learn how Nestle, Meta, and BCG teamed up to kickstart a joint collaboration program to help Nestle Health, Health, Nestle Health Science set up new business model and accelerate conversational commerce journey through artificial intelligence. Today is the finale session of Nest Level 2022. So make sure you join the rest of the session the entire day. Don't panic if you miss a session. All of our sessions are recorded and they will be uploaded later this week because there's a still a lot of session happening. Feel free to share your thoughts on LinkedIn and tag us. Hashtag Nest Level 2022. Have a great day, everyone, and see you in the next session.